Three is the magic number for Barcelona as they go temporarily top in La Liga. A 3-0 win at Ibar and the goals all coming courtesy of the front three. Yanish, a good day all round. It was. It wasn't a perfect game. The first 45 minutes, Bar Barca didn't look very interested. But uh, in the end, it was about the front three. And, uh, and really, it wasn't about Barca. It wasn't about Messi, even though he scored. For me, it was about Antoine Griezmann, even though he plays on that left-hand side, which is not ideal for him. But, you know, when you play in that position, when you play alongside Messi and Suarez, you have to earn their trust. I don't think he has so far. And there's been many. Paco Alcacer, David Villa played in that uh, situation. Paco Alcacer didn't work. Uh, uh, Turan remember there's a number of players that didn't work out in this place but I'll tell you not only the first goal which was very important uh, against uh, Ibar today the second goal to Messi great little through ball as well on the third one so uh, I was very very impressed yet I still don't think that that's why Barcelona has spent so much money for Antoine Griezmann to play him on the left hand side so where is his position it's not something that you think is a long-term fit with the front three laid out like that well, for as long as Suarez shows the moments of brilliance that we see from him, for as long as he's fit, he's going to have to play on the left-hand side. And if he plays like this, uh, then I think, you know, for, you want to be in the starting 11, you want to be on the pitch. But I think ultimately he's got to be there instead of Suarez, I suppose. He's got to play through the center. He likes to drop off. He's pretty good on the break. Messi will always find him as well. But today, for the first time, I just, I just had that feeling that he's done well. And I think if you went to Messi and Suarez, they'd probably uh, go to him and say, this is how you need to play, game in and game out. How about further back? How's the balance looking in that midfield, particularly with Frankie de Jong? Frankie de Jong looked good, huh? Applauded off the pitch today. Uh, obviously, head on the swivel, sees absolutely everything. He's so wonderful to watch. And, and again, uh, contributed in goals in, in terms of a build-up, maybe not the, the final passes, and, and had some leading balls as well. I still have a feeling that he prefers to play in front of the back four, the deepest point where Busquets played, uh, plays as well. I mean, he's going to have to be the next Xavi of Barcelona. I mean, that's a tall, tall order. Uh, I almost envision him a little bit like Pirlo in his days at Juventus and Milan, where he's obviously not going to win the ball, but I think he's better than Pirlo was in terms of uh, his defending and his distribution. is just so wonderful to watch. So uh, Frankie de Jong is going to be fine. Just give him time. He's already doing well. Uh, of course, the Classico... Uh, looking to the horizon, do you think that the team is in is in a good shape to face down Real Madrid at the moment? Well, the the classical looks like it's going to it's going to be postponed from next week into December 18th. So right. that will give Barcelona that little extra time because uh, I mean all those teams are in disarray. I don't like the, you know. For me, Barcelona is in decline anyway, has been ever since Pep has left and Xavi and Iniesta. But so is Real Madrid. Atletico Madrid are being rebuilt as well. So. I still think Barcelona are favourites. OK, so what grade do you give them based on this performance going forward? B. All right. Much to improve. He's a hard taskmaster, is old Yanish here. But that's three points, three goals, and they're currently, currently temporarily top. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.